Hey everybody, what's up? Nate here, another update on Overland Truck. Today is gonna to be a little different. I'm gonna show you what not to do. We had a little miscommunication, misunderstanding, something between me and the guys. Um, but check this out. Air tanks. Not exactly what I was looking for, but works good. Um, what we're gonna end up doing Gray tank, black tank, all that fun stuff. Um, this proved to be a problem here. Um, made a lot of mistakes this last couple days. Um, I got super crazy busy with work, so I was not down here directing as much as I could have been, should have been. Um, gave the guys a little too much free reign on some of these decisions and you know, having all this stuff in your head is kind of part of the problem. Anyway. Um, the tanks, uh, overflow tank, the fill lines, the dipsticks, all that stuff. Um, we kind of moved and mounted. You guys took this original bracket and chopped it up and made a little T off here to hold this. Part of the problem is we have eight inches from the front of the box and those guys thought it was eight inches to here. It's actually eight inches to this side. So the front of the box comes to about right here, which is not enough room for all these hoses to go through. So that kind of posed a problem. We talked about some ideas, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna mount it pretty far up, and then that will give us enough room where uh, these two fill hoses for the transmission and the oil fill for the motor will be on this side of this bracket I'm going to put them on this side where they can come over and kind of run down. The motor one can loop under here, which is this hose right here. Again, this is just a fill hose. It goes into this, which goes in down in the motor. So that is an oil fill um, for the engine oil. The other one of these over here is the transmission fill on this one. Just goes in this flexible rubber hose. So we're going to do the same thing with this. It's going to run up. We'll go up here, get a little more room to work there, and we're not gonna wrap them around like this. These two can go on the front, so this whole system is gonna come back this way a little bit. Um, side note, these sight glasses, put a wrench on these, I don't know if you can really see, they crack. <laughs> so that one's cracked, I gotta replace that, um, but don't put a wrench on those because you might end up with a broken one. Anyway. Dipstick tubes, those are going to be fine. We're going to tuck those up. Um, actually, we're tucking them up on this side. I'm not, yeah, I think we're tucking them up on this side in between these two up in here somewhere. Um, so that's all going to have to get redone and rearranged. And then let's move on to this debacle. So the body of this is coming out to about here, right? Just past the tires. So we're going... Um, Eight, six wide. I know a lot of you guys are going to say that's stupid, but whatever. Um, I want the extra six inches inside. I hate small spaces inside. I mean, full time in this thing. Six inches on the trail is not going to give me that much. I'd much rather have it in my living space. So for you guys that don't like that, totally get it. No problem. But I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> it's Monday. Not in a great mood about that today. Um, anyway, so... There's enough room behind my tanks, which we designed to be, you know, on the very outside. We're gonna hang those from the subframe. And they're gonna be out here. That gives us um, about an inch space to have these tanks. Uh, this is battery bracket here. This is gonna hang down. The batteries are gonna be just below the frame here. So they'll slide out the back and be able to drop down without having to have too much of an issue to worry about those. Um, Problem is, the guys thought this was a good idea. Um, first thing I saw of it was like, dude, that tank is way too low. It's like clearly lower than everything else in here. And it's my wet air tank. I don't want to lose that. And it's also kind of centered between the tires. So if I do high center on anything, it's going to hit that. Not my favorite idea. So what we're going to do... This tank is going to slide over here. This tank is going to come up here, slide over here. 
battery bracket's gonna slide back down here, kind of in between the tire and the frame in this space. The wet tank is gonna go up where this tank is, but with all the measurements, we get it right, it will fit in this space, so it's not gonna hang below the frame rail at all. So, a lot more protection for the wet tank, and this is what created the problem. My black tanks, the drainage is back here in the back center. So that is gonna drain towards the center of the cab. And what I'm gonna do with those is hook those together. And they're gonna Y. Um, they're actually gonna be just below this. So moving this tank up is perfect because those drains are gonna be just below the frame rail. I'm gonna bring them along over here. They're gonna come in. I'm gonna attach them to the bottom of the uh, battery bracket, so we down here and then have a little spout uh, With a valve here, so it's gonna be right in front of this rear tire the Skin is gonna be like here, so I'll just be able to reach in Do that cap Put my hose on and be able to drain the sewer out to the drain So that's good um, That is all sorted out that took us a couple hours this afternoon to figure out um, I also check this out. This is fun um, got my new air dryer in Look the size of this. This has a $12 spin on filter and replaces this giant mess. So this tiny little thing, it's got a new blow off valve, um, replaces that and best thing, it was like 60 bucks. Those over there are a couple hundred for the other big replacements. The rating on this, um, I'm probably gonna have to change it maybe once a year in this kind of warm, humid-ish weather over here. So that should be pretty easy. Um, when I test that, I'm gonna make sure I give you guys a link to be able to purchase one of those because they're super cheap and they work really good. Um, and it's a lot easier and nicer than trying to fix one of those. And actually the cost on that is, um, less than the cost of the rebuild kit for those. So that was kind of the mess I had to clean up today. Um, this is the battery hold down bracket. It's gonna fit two batteries in here. That's good enough for me. I don't need four. Plus I'm gonna have a solenoid, solenoid that will hook it up to the house batteries for an emergency start. If I do need some more battery power or somehow those go dead or it's really, really cold or whatever. Uh, this is my water tank. One of the water tanks. This is 95 gallon. I have my fill and a vent up here. And then underneath, I've got a drain. Uh, this is the output. And that is going to live in this bay right here. So that's 95 gallons. And then I've got one that's going inside in the back. That's 135. So that is pretty cool. Uh, nothing else has really changed on this side too much. Um, I got a long list of things to do still. Here is the walls. We finally got those sprayed because the weather stopped raining. Subframe, which is upside down, and the flooring, or uh, subframe and the cross members, sorry. So we're welding on this little extra piece here to support uh, the sheet metal underneath. So this is upside down. Again, this is gonna be sheet metaled. And then on the other side of that, I'll have my insulation and then my floor on top of that for inside. Um, these are the spring mount brackets. These are done. So you can kind of see how, sorry, there's a lot of stuff in the background. Maybe one of these will be better. Yeah, you can kind of see how these ears are flanged out to help with centering. Um, transmission bolt access holes, super important if you guys do this because you don't want to have to remove all this stuff if you ever have to service your transmission um so here are the walls done um i already showed you guys that last time but i didn't show you was this really up close you can see this difference here this is the front part of the uh habitat this is the back part this is smaller here because in this space we're building a slide out deck so this deck is gonna be, when it's finished, the outside deck will be nine feet wide and six feet deep. So I'll have a nine by six 
deck outside that slides out from underneath it all locks together for outdoor living space uh, right outside the front door super cool we're doing three separate parts of it so i can slide out just one part and have side entry stairs um, or i can slide out all three parts and have front entry stairs or any combination of those two so that should be pretty cool again front wall back walls over there um, that's about it for today i know it's been a little while it's been a kind of crazy week with work stuff so um yeah that's where i'm at let me know any comments below if you guys have any suggestions ideas um questions happy to answer make sure and subscribe so you always get the updates and hit the like button i would really appreciate it and hopefully in the next uh two weeks we'll have this stuff done we'll have that flipped over we'll have the trays built and maybe this thing ready to mount on here so I can start building out the inside. Anyway, sorry for the long video. Uh, that's it. You guys have a great week. We'll talk to you later. See ya.